Ooh, what's up guys? Of course, welcome to our Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your thrill, of course, the Disc Render. And today we got ourselves a match against Ioku. Hope I'm not butchering that name. Real sorry about that. He calls himself Bliss on uh, his uh, Pokemon Trainer card. But besides that, you know, Ioku is a uh, other Poketuber actually. And a rather small one at that, I think is just upcoming. So I'm gonna link his side of this battle because I already uploaded it. So make sure to check that one out, guys. And uh, I'm gonna leave his channel, of course, and his Twitter. So make sure to check this guy out and, you know, support him and whatnot. He's, like I said, he's not coming to Poketuber and he needs all the support he can get. And um, just straight on at it, he has a very, very prominent, a very, very tough NU team here. We got Primate, Buffalo, and Lantern, Weezing, Lilligant, and of course, Mega Camerot. I myself am using Cricutune. Yes, people, I'm using Cricutune. Uh, Metang, uh, Semipore, Vibrava, and uh, Vigoroth, and of course, Grumpig. And this time, Grumpig is not going to get a knockoff kill like he did previously. He's actually going to play a major factor here. But uh, here or here, or rather, um, as you guys know, the reason I used to be Brava, I'm glad the response of the Boom Brothers that you guys like that set. I really like it too, obviously. And I really designed it just, I guess, Mega Camera, because my biggest issue in NU, I can't really stress this enough, it is that Mega Camera is just able to dent my team throughout very often. So having the Brava, which I actually have, um, he has resisted hits no matter what it does. Uh, makes it quite formidable in combination with Roos, it's kind of bulky, it's kind of mean and uh, like I said, that was really the reason and uh, I'm very glad I did this because Mega Camerot is a threat in this battle and I'm gonna do my best to actually work around it so yeah, with all this my guys, hell, let's do this so right, at the get-go, I really just wanted Cricutune to get a honey chance because it will have a miserable time this battle. He's gonna start off with the camera. That is that is unfortunate, so I can't stay in with Cricutune here. I really want to use that, but I knew that he's just gonna mega evolve to get in that freely. In the worst case scenario, he's gonna set up Stealth Rocks. So Elmenor is gonna take in the chance here and uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, there the only design I actually this is based on is that it's gonna be able to wall out the mega cameras and whatnot. So it's gonna go for ancient power, which of course is not that powerful, even with his sheer force boosted. And I knew it was gonna switch out. There's no reason for me to go for another power earthquake or anything like that. So Boomers felt safe because of wheezing and whatnot. And what do you know? <laughs> I actually got this prediction right. And I do a roughly one third, but in combination with the black sludge. It's gonna be a slow kill, and uh, it's very possible that he can poison me, which is something I don't prefer. I mean, Dandelay, which is the um, Grumpy, the Salt Vested, of course, is probably more formidable here. And look at this. He is taking this like a champ. And um, the, I knew it was gonna switch out. I knew his Psy Strike or Psy Shock was pretty con obvious, but I really just wanted to um, go for damage. Uh, when he brought the lantern, I felt kind of safe here. He could lure me, uh, you know, to go for energy ball here because I had the buffalo, which could have sapped Sipper. But decided, you know, take a chance and go for energy ball uh, since it was a switch and maybe hoping for him to go for volt switch. I do, you know, I I'm doing some fair damage here. Lanterns actually take that quite nicely. And at this point, I was feeling, right, I've showed energy ball this time. He's not gonna stay for another one because he's not that he's not in that good position either. He might be able to take it, but it might not be worth it. So we're actually gonna have a volt switch. Like I said, I did expect that, and I do expect the buffalo to come in. And um, yeah. I mean like I said there, it could have sap zippers. I was really scared about that because that is probably the most or the better uh, ability on it. So I'm still yet to be paralyzed. I think this is two times in a row I haven't been paralyzed. Sideshock does of course nothing because it's a buffalo. It's a defensive beast, and I knew it was just gonna go for a stab here, maybe head charge. I knew that my Metang could kind of take this, and uh, it still does much. And with that damage, I knew this Pokemon is reckless, banded reckless, and uh, basically, I knew it was gonna switch out to his Weezing, so I just decided to switch out myself and do the Grump pick. Because, like I said, there, uh, my Metang can't really do anything this battle. It's kind of. It's kind of overdue. Metang is just there to take hits and then die, and it's just because his synergy is very, very tough against Metang, so he won't be able to do any significant amount of damage, and I knew that. So anyway, he's gonna decide to stay in here. I decided to go for a side shock, thinking that it is a safer move, because I do hit it naturally on almost everything in his team, and Energy Ball felt really risky, 
against a Pokemon that can actually wall that out. So yeah, still I'm being paralyzed, guys. This is awesome. So he's gonna bring back the Buffaloons, and um, yeah, I'm seriously gonna go for Psyshock. There is no reason for me to you know, stop doing so because it still does very very high damage, and I do score a crit there, which is actually not gonna really gonna matter. And uh, I couldn't stay in here. Sure, I could have switched out to my Vibrava. But like I said, their Mime Tank is not really made for his battle. It's, he actually predicted right here with Earthquake. And it is completely fine. Like I said, there, there is no way Mime Tank could have done anything here in this battle. And plus, he's locked now into, of course, the um, Earthquake. And I knew that, so I'm just going to go for another Boom Burst. Because, you know, that is what I do. I boom burst things and uh, boom burst is such a powerful move. Yes, we got 50 base special attack on Vibrava, and it looks like from this range that he is able to take another one. So I knew it was gonna stay in, but of course I packed her power. I mean, come on, I needed coverage, right? Boom burst is for almost everything, and the steel type of resistance is gonna get a nice earth power. And luckily for me, it was a lantern too. And now it's gonna bring the big booty, which is the Lilligant and I'm so glad I had Vital Spirit on my uh, Vigoroth or rather it's the only ability you can get on it because now I am resist of course to you know sleep obviously and that is great that is great it's something I can work with and he's gonna switch out to his Weezing and just since I haven't pulled up or anything like that I don't really do that much damage it actually looks like he recover more than I do on it so I really felt that, alright, I I could bulk up, but at the same time it could go for will o -Wisp. there's no way for me to actually deal with that, plus he can go for Pain Split, which it was decided to do, so I knew that my Grump Pig was probably the better bet here, I'm not gonna lie about that, because uh, Grump Pig is um, well whittled down by default, so I, I felt really safe here. So anyway, he's gonna go to his camera. And I just went to side shock. Really, I have still yet to be paralyzed. This is like the seventh time I haven't been paralyzed, which is really nice. But I do like the speed, of course, and he's gonna be able to actually outspeed me. So I'm just gonna go for the Brava because, yeah, it's it's made for dealing with Mega Camera. It's gonna go for powerful Power Blast, Share Force boosted. Mmm, it actually is very close to taking me out. And I knew it wasn't gonna stay in here because. Uh, Earth Power will take him out, and he knew I had the Earth Power, so I just decided to go for Roost, you know, I'm not going to uh, Dilly Dally here, Vibrava is made for staying, and I designed it like that by default, and uh, yeah, this time I'm gonna stay in, because now I know it probably doesn't pack um, Will-O-Wisp, and I do expect him to go for Sludge Bomb, but hey, Vibrava just, you know, he took it to the cell, like, he had enough, we sing, get out of here, we had enough of this, I am the only levitating Pokemon around. So he's gonna go to his big booty, and um, yeah, at this point, I really felt that he's not gonna go for another sleep powder. He knew what I'm all about, so I'm just gonna decide to sack off my Grumpig. Grumpig is, I'll say he has done some, or she has done some very, very good thing in this battle, and I'm, I'm very, very fine with sacking it. It's, I was hoping it could kind of survive a pedal dance, but I don't know, and it definitely went down there, you know. It might be able to survive, but hell, who knows with life form and whatnot. So anyway, Voidar is gonna go in. I know he's locked in, so he's basically a buffet for me. Uh, I am a salt vested cricket tune, and it, hey, what do you know? <laughs> it kind of works. Um, it only works because we're locked in, of course. Airlace is technician boosted, and hey, that's awesome. That did so much damage. Sadly, he got me a camera, and. Really, Cricketune is not that, um, that, no, bulky is the wrong word, but I'll say not made to actually, you know, take a lot of punishment. So, Mirrorlay is does like one, what is that, one third maybe, and he's gonna finish my poor Cricketune with the Fire Blast. And like that, <laughs> I'm completely fine by this. And I'm just gonna go to my semi poor. Uh, I'm gonna set up um, a nasty plot, hoping to survive an Earth Power. Um, but, he has Hidden Power Grass. Which I did not expect, and uh, looking by that damage that he got here, he would have probably taken me out with an earth power because it's sheer boost and whatnot. And um, with stab, earth power is actually a stronger move than hidden power. And uh, yeah, kind of misplay my opponent, but then again, it does uh, open up for Salak Berry boosted Sivipore with Brian because it's made to get on to under 50%, which means that Brian becomes 130 boost. 
attack move is to the 65. But his primary believes this. I was so surprised that he took this. I had no idea <laughs> it would survive. And now we're in a bit of picky. Because he only got Bufflin left and he got the um, primary left. And I got Vibrava and I got Vigorov. And I wasn't sure if Vigorov could even take the kind of punishment that is close combat. So I'm just going to go for return here because I'm a, I am able to have speed and I really want to set up bulk ups but at the same time I am not able to take a close combat or, an, or a headshot really. So anyway, can I take a close combat? Like I said, I am not defensively built. I'm max HP, max speed and I took that quite nicely. I mean, it does a lot of damage, yes, but I am actually able to survive which was really really surprising and Vigorov is able to of course finish off this battle with another return so that is gonna be GG IOQ um, a very nice battle and I'm very glad I got to showcase a lot of my sets and I'm very glad that it kinda held up against the tougher sets in NU which you definitely represented and overall while I do do a good a few good predictions uh, you still kept me at bay and I had a rough time coming around. It was only like the unique sets that really, really stopped you from sweeping me. But I'll say it was a good game. You definitely did a great job here. So GG man, GG. So yeah, like I said there, the earth power I guess, from my opponent that he didn't go for it against my Simicore. Um Definitely, you know, it's up for debate, yes. But at the same time I felt that... Eh, let's say now that you live that... Um, then Simipore would still, the outcome would be the same. Had my Simipore been taken out, I would still use my Vigoroth. And um, Vigoroth would probably take out the camera. He would have gone to his... Um, um, sorry. To his Prime Ape and go for close combat. And then the return due to the defense drop might as well be able to take him out. Or at least be close to. And if he didn't, then he would still be locked into that. Which means that he would have been able to switch out. Which means that I could have brought my Vibrava, go for a Roost, and I finished off with Boom Burst. And I'm pretty sure Vibrava could take anything besides Ice Punch against the Primeape. So, it's still, you know, last game matchup. And it might have been, like I said, very capable that my opponent would have won this battle had it gone for her part instead. But hell, it turned out to be a nice battle no matter what. And I think my opponent played a good game. I really needed to overpredict a lot to actually get the right momentum because... His team buildup was just, it was so much bulkier than mine, and I, I knew that. I knew that I had to be doing big damage on a Pokemon that matters. And Weezing was definitely a tough Pokemon for me to actually deal with, and I'm glad we brought back Ukana. Fend it off somewhat. It definitely was, it was made for living, and uh, me not getting paralyzed once, what are the odds? Uh, so, anyway, like I said, the guys, make sure to check this guy out. He's an upcoming Pocket Tuber, and I wish him all the luck. He was definitely a good battler, and um, yeah, that was awesome. So tomorrow you're gonna get the Mega Diancy battle. He's gonna go OU, yes, and um, that's gonna be very interesting. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I want to thank you, of course, for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you're new to the channel. What's up? So have a good guys, and take care. Right? Bye. And you know, this guy's name is all. Eh, whatever. Take care, guys. Bye.